I do not believe, as many people would agree, that socialism is half right. I'm convinced it's all wrong. The instrument, uh, as far as I understand your philosophy, for all this is law, isn't it? To yes. you, the law is, the, is perhaps the, the bedrock on which everything else rests, the rule of law. Yes, surely. Now, however, do you not agree that law itself can be unjust in this sense, that law is made by people, by human beings, and they tend to make it in their own interests. Mm -hmm. The game laws of the 18th century were devised to prevent poor people taking the pheasants and the rabbits of the rich people. Now, won't that always be so, that law is made in the interests of those making it and the rest are shut out? It and that therefore the protection of the law is, in a sense, illusory. I'm glad you raised this problem because it shows very beautifully how the prevalence of a political philosophy can keep the law in the right limit. In the 19th century, I think this conception that only that was law, which was a general rule equally applicable to all, and giving us all the same chances and advantages, has become very generally spread. It's in trying to help particular people that we have destroyed this condition, conception of law as a general rule. So, surely, preserving the kind of law which I want presupposes a sort of general philosophy, which in an imperfect form existed. And if you look into the writings of uh, Tocqueville or even Burke already, or Lord Acton, you have a very highly developed philosophical basis for the conception of the rule of law. You know, it seems to me, to some extent at any rate, that you are demanding something that is impossible, that, that your beliefs, the execution of your beliefs, the solution to the problems you propose, seem to depend on people in general, I don't mean their leaders, but the whole people, being infinitely wiser than is likely in the ordinary run of human nature. No. Uh, I think you're right to say the extent that what I'm wanting may be impossible in the present state of opinion. And then I must return to what I say, maybe things have to get much worse before we can do anything. But it's not a question of wisdom. Ultimately, all our moral institutions depend on more or less irrational traditional beliefs. And while it may be very difficult deliberately to create a tradition, just as the intellectuals of the 19th and early 20th century have created a bias towards the socialist conception, I think a change of opinion in the intellectuals may, without their being understood, again create a moral background of opinion which is really favorable to liberty in my sense. But it may of course mean that the kind of reforms which I want may come only in a hundred years' time.